Fernando, are you ready? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Public Works for today, Friday, May 19th, 2017. Commissioner Rivas, repenting, James Davis and has sent to our president, President James, we have a quorum. May we start with Bureau introductions, please, starting with Bureau of Street Services. Good morning, Tim Tyson, Bureau of Street Services. Good morning, Julie Souter, Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, Hannah Choi, Bureau of Contract Administration. Good morning, Ruben Flamenco, Bureau of Street Lighting. Jose Garcia, Bureau of Street, uh, Sanitation. <laughs> Good morning, Ted Jordan, Public Works General Counsel. Dr. Campos, Fernando Campos, um, Board of Public Works, Executive Officer. President James, we receive speaker cards under general public comment. We have no commentary under the Neighborhood Council comment section, and we also receive speaker cards on all the items for today's agenda. Okay, thank you. So um, we will close the Neighborhood Council category of commentary. Um, is there a second to my motion that we approve the meeting minutes from the meeting of Wednesday, May 3rd, 2017? By Commissioner Repenny. Uh, any objection? With that objection, we will do so. Um, we have some administrative items this morning. Um, agenda item number 16, specifications submitted for board adoption and authorization to advertise for the invitation of bids. This is in Council District 10 for the Vision Theater and Manchester Junior Arts Center Phase 2 through 3 project. The estimate's $20,075,000. The bid receipt date is Wednesday, August 2nd, 2017. Mr. Herman, you have a card on number 16. Now, to those of you who heard, 20 million is not quite a, a bit of money. After all, when the board adopted the authorization to advertise for a, what's that, an invitation of bids? We know that most minorities who uh, are struggling to uphold their businesses don't get the same fairness in the city of Los Angeles because it's all about pay to play. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's, let's talk about the attorneys involved with pay to play, like uh, Mr. Yanzi Farzad, spelled Y A S. S-I-N-I. Now, what does he have to do with this? Well, see, he's outside counsel. He makes six to eight hundred dollars an hour. And when you got Paul Krikorian's business friends willing and dealing in the city of Los Angeles, guess who gets screwed on the bids? Yeah? That's who gets screwed. And let's talk about Mr. Arash Hamapur. Who the fuck is he? Another of Mr. Krikorian's lawyer friends. So there's a lot of bad, shaky business in Los Angeles, and I'm getting sick and tired of hearing about it. I think we all are. Imagine a better place for us all with more money to fix the infrastructure of our streets and provide better services, fix potholes, finish a bridge that goes from Boyle Heights to the west side over here with all the white folks. But let me not say white folks. Let me keep it like in my category. See, I'm Caucasian with a very beautiful tan, according to my birth certificate. So when you're spending $20 million and you're not accounting for that, rookies, I warn you, rookies, you got nerve. You definitely got nerve misusing public funds. Uh, thank you, Mr. Herman. Mr. Spinner, you have a card on number 16? Yeah. Oh, the puppet signed up. Go ahead. Yes, that's right. All of you know that this $20 million is nothing but legalized theft. That's right. $20 million for the invitation of bids for something called Vision Theater of Manchester Junior Arts, Phase 2 3. How much did Phase 1 cost? How much will phase four through 20 cost? Public Works doesn't give a shit because it's all stealing through a municipal corporation. And the five board members, well, what do they have? 
uh, qualified immunity. Qualified immunity, yes. And what happens when they act in dereliction of duty? Uh, they, they lose their qualified immunity and can be sued individually for punitive damages. Ah, yes, that's what we found out. So all of you stealing here can be sued individually for punitive damages. You waive your immunity if you have notice of the issue. And what have we been doing for two years? I'm giving you notice of the hinky pinky going on here. Yes, the little hinky pinky. Like Dell Richardson and Associates contract in June last year. Hinky pinky, shame, shame, shame. And then the mayor had to cancel all the contracts by rescission without a signature to cover up your criminal behavior. Yes, but we have the documents. So in conclusion, go to Van Nuys and drop the criminal case and the criminal case against George Bassetti that you just fucking filed too. Thank you. On agenda item number 16, is there a second to my motion that we adopt agenda item number 16 forthwith? By Commissioner Repenning, any objection? Without objection, we will do so. Agenda item number 17, another administrative item, stop notice. Hardy and Harper Incorporated. Hardy and Harper Incorporated has transmitted a stop notice in the amount of $194,478.43 for asphalt and concrete related materials and labor in connection with the Machado Lake Ecosystem Rehabilitation Project. The contractor is OHL USA. Mr. Herman, you have a card on number 17. Pass on 17. Mr. Spindler, you have a card on 17. Yes, we'll take 30 seconds on this item. So, as we point out, today we have to let everybody steal. So, stop notices must be canceled. Give the $194,000 to this nice company as a gift. Yes, give it as a gift. And finally, as we say in the other room across the street, fuck you. Is there a second to my motion that we receive agenda item number 17 forthwith by Commissioner Sacinto and Rivas? Any objection? With that objection, we will do so. Um, agenda item number 15, authority for expenditure, truck owners on file, Office of Accounting and the Bureau of Street Services is requesting board approval and execution of an authority for expenditure in the amount of $1,200,000 to provide funds for the Bureau's as-needed trucking program. As-needed truckers supplement existing staff in the transportation of materials, equipment, and debris throughout the city to maintain service levels provided by the Bureau. On number 15, Mr. Herman, you have a card? Yes, I'm, I'm here in, in the favor of item 15. I believe you should give them a variance on their needed trucking programs. I'm only going to use up 30 seconds after all. I'm not here to masturbate my time with this article. And throughout the city to maintain the services and levels to provide access safely on our streets so these trucks can manage our responsibilities. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spinner. You have a card on number 15. Yes, for the record, fuck you. 30 seconds now. Oh, this is good, yes. And I recommend Dell Richardson and Associates for this contract. They are very good at moving people and things out of apartments and into the fucking streets. So please amend to read to Dell Richardson and Associates this contract. She's a very pretty lady. Thank you very much. Um, Sergio Samo uh, Samoyoa, good morning. Hi. Sergio Samoyoa, Bureau of Street Services, um, good morning. Uh, the Office of the County and Bureau of Street Services requesting uh, board approval and execution for the authority uh, for expenditure in the amount of 1.2 million. So this represents the, the final installment for the year. Um, the expenditures have been pretty consistent with last year. So um, those were used in the calculation of the projections for this year. 
And consistent, Sergio, with the 2,400 miles, correct? The 2,400 miles for pavement preservation? Right. There, there was a... Um, there was a change in the rate, so there's there's quite a bit of, of, of factors involved in the calculation. Um, I think one of the changes that was made was was based on weight, uh, on the type of vehicle that wasn't in existence last time. So um, I can find out for you exactly if if you know in terms of the payment preservation there was any changes, uh, but you know at this point we would have to kind of look at each factor and see what changed between last year and this year. The totals remain consistent, though, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's what our projection is. Commissioner Davis, in terms of this allotment of funds, this is uh, monies that are allocated for the last quarter of the year. Right. Actually, it's it's for May and June. For May so, and June. So yeah, okay. April has already been paid through. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. We'll make a motion uh, that we adopt agenda item number 15. I'll second it. Any objection? Without objection, we will adopt agenda item number 15. Any issues sending number 15 forthwith? We will send number 15 forthwith. Agenda item number 10 is an above ground facility appeal. Um, and I apologize uh, to the parties that are in the room. I should have uh, continued this item at the beginning of the meeting. Um, the, it's a, it's a above ground facility appeal in Council District 14. Um, there's been a request from the Council District that we continue these appeals a couple of weeks to give the Council Office the opportunity to um, have further discussions with the applicant um, uh, as well as the Bureau of Engineering. So uh, agenda item number 14, if we continue it two weeks, uh, Dr. Campus, does that take us to Friday, June 2nd on number 10? That is correct, Friday, okay. June 2nd. So Friday, June 2nd um, on um, number 10 continuance um, and anything else that's in existing, uh, that's listed in an existing agenda for an above ground facility for Council District 14, uh, we're going to have in that uh, that two-hour window of opportunity for them to, uh, two, I'm sorry, two-hour, that's not enough time, right? Two-week window uh, for the Council Office to work with the applicant and the Bureau of Engineering on this. Agenda item number 11, Office of Community Beautification, Council District 12, Contract Amendment, West Valley Alliance, recommending that the Board first authorize the Office of Community Beautification to execute Contract Amendment 13 to an existing contract with West Valley Alliance in the amount of $95,000 for graffiti and weed abatement services within five miles of Sunshine Canyon landfill and throughout the rest of Council District 12. Uh, Mr. Spenner, you have a card on number um, 11? Good. Fully supported. Good job. We were talking about this Wednesday. Uh, Appreciate it, Councilman Englander. Yes, good job. Thank you, Mr. Spinner. Mr. Herman on number 11. Ten seconds. Diddle, diddle. Mr. Roch on agenda item number 11. Good morning, Paul Roch, Director of the Office of Community Beautification. Uh, requesting board approval um, for authority to execute a contract uh, amendment with uh, West Valley Alliance, one of our nonprofit community based organizations which provides service in the uh, West San Fernando Valley. Um, these are funds that were transferred from the office of uh, Councilman Englander um, primarily to supplement and support the work of West Valley Alliance uh, in Council District 12 including graffiti abatement, litter cleanup, weed abatement, and also the maintenance of some of the street medians in uh, CD12. And uh, we do request uh, board approval. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Roch on agenda item number 11? I don't have any questions. I'll make a motion um, that we adopt agenda item number 11, seconded by Commissioner Asinto. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 11. Any issues sending number 11 forthwith? We'll send number 11 forthwith. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, agenda item number 12. Mr. Roger here on that as well, but we have speaker cards. Council District 9, Contract Amendment, Coalition for Responsible Community Development, recommending that the board authorize the Office of Community Beautification to an amend an existing contract with the Coalition for Responsible Community Development in the amount of $16,804.88 to allow for the final payment of the Broadway Neighborhood Stormwater Greenway Project completion in the 9th Council District. Mr. Herman, you have a card on number 12. 
Yeah, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to Mr. Uh, Paul Ross for his excellent uh, community service and his uh, negotiation for uh, these types of uh, environmental uh, neighborhood storm uh, gateways and greenway projects. After all, you know, we have so much concrete in Los Angeles, you know, most of us can't, can't get enough of greenery in, in nowadays, you know, after all, you know, current price, he has a rooster where he lives, and Jose Weizar with all this overdevelopment is just destroying Los Angeles, a Fiesta Broadway, because he takes away our uh, individual uh, rights to uh, have parking near the curbside for people who are disabled. But that's just my comment. But once again, I, I think this coalition should receive double that amount, because after all, dollar and cents don't mean a goddamn thing in L.A. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of this amount to be doubled so that there's no... Um, discrepancies of whether they're short or need to have some sort of amendment to allocate more money on their behalf. So shout out to you once again, Mr. Paul Ross, for your excellent work. Keep it up. Keep providing the young groups working. Give them, give them money, give them jobs, give them jobs, give them money. The more money we make, the more money we spend. It's a good song. Uh, thank you, Mr. Herman. Uh, Mr. Rocha, number 12. Paul Roch, Director of the Office of Community Beautification. Um, this is a situation where uh, one of our contractors, Coalition for Responsible Community Development, uh, provided work as part of the uh, Broadway Neighborhood um, Stormwater Greenway Project, which was led by the Bureau of Engineering. And uh, they uh, wanted to contract uh, some of the work to be performed by CRCD. The work was completed last year uh, in 2016 uh, for a total amount of $127,000. Um, CRCD unfortunately uh, did not invoice for the final $16,804.88 in time and those funds were reverted back to the Prop O fund uh, at the end of the fiscal year. Um, Council Di Bureau of Engineering then worked with Council District 9 to reappropriate those funds back to OCB so we can get them into a contract and uh, provide the final payment to CRCD. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, any uh, questions on agenda item number 12? Commissioner Jacinto has made a motion that we adopt agenda item number 12, seconded by Commissioner Jacinto. Um, any, uh, I'm sorry, by Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Jacinto made the motion. Commissioner Davis seconded it. Um, any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 12. Any issues sending it forthwith? We'll send number 12 forthwith. Thank you, sir. Thank Agenda you. item number 13, um, Bureau of Sanitation and Bureau of Contract Administration, request for proposals, sewer roach control treatment, uh, recommending to the board authorize the director of the Bureau of Sanitation to distribute and advertise the transmitted request for proposals for sewer roach control and treatment. Secondly, evaluate the proposals, interview and select the most qualified proposer uh, based on established rating criteria. Third, negotiate a contract with the most qualified proposer. And fourth, return to the Board of Public Works for authority to execute the contracts. Mr. Herman, you have a card on number 13. I'll hold this to you one minute. You know, if we're going to have the Olympics in Los Angeles or anywhere in the state of California, wouldn't it be in the best interest for these Olympics to be postponed due to the roach control? problem? Don't we have enough problem with uh, infestations of rats? And now we have a roach control problem with, our, with what transmitting diseases and other type of icky, icky stuff, you know? So I'm totally against this proposal, you know? You know, sewer roach control treatment for the Olympics? What are you, what are you supposed to do, swim in a swamp with a bunch of roaches? Or how about like Peppa Pig, Mr. Paul Koretz, kicking people out of a high-rise building so that the cockroaches can get cleaned out of the facility? This is my concern about the Olympics. I say vote no on the Olympics, vote no on, on the roach control. They'll all live us all. And if you kill them, who's next? We, the people. Uh, Mr. Spinner, you have a card on number 13. 
Well, anyway, we've got the largest cockroach that's in Van Nuys. The biggest cockroach, Nuri Martinez, the pimp. So yes, we need to clean up the cockroaches. They're not living in the sewers. They're living in the council district offices in Van Nuys. Now what they're doing in Van Nuys with the cockroaches over there is you got Tamar Gallatson working in the city attorney's office and they're putting people in jail under 647 for soliciting prostitutes that Nuri Martinez and her pimps are putting out on the streets. That's your cockroaches. So you don't need to worry about actual cockroaches. Mr. Spindler, speak to the item. The actual cockroach is not in the sewer. The actual cockroach is Nuri Martinez. To enter the fuck out of that fucking office and have the grand jury across the street indict the cockroach. Norman Ronquillo. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, I'm here to give an overview for the civil roads control and treatment. Uh, the, the, the city of Los Angeles owns and operates the largest wastewater collection systems in the nation with 6,700 miles of sewers and 140,000 maintenance homes. In order uh, to protect public health and the environment, it is essential uh, to reduce the cockroach population in the sewer system. Currently, the city has a contract that will expire in July of next year. In order to continue the critical roads control program, a new RMP must be uh, processed. The contract term is five years with a cost ceiling of $995,000. And the scope of work will include the treatment of about 7,000 maintenance holes per year citywide with the application of US EPA approved chemical that is safe to the environment. The effectiveness of the treatment should last for at least two years longer than the conventional spray applications that normally last three to six months. The work is essentially limited to applying insecticide, insecticide latex uh, coating inside the sewer maintenance holes to a depth of eight feet. And it takes uh, about five minutes to complete. Since the subcontracting opportunities were not existent, the Mayor's Office of Economic Development had waived the Business Inclusion Program Outreach requirements on January 4 this year. Funding will be made available through the normal budgetary process. And upon board authorization, RFP will be posted on LA Bavin. LA Sanitation will designate a committee to evaluate, interview, rank, select, and negotiate with the most qualified uh, proposer. And LA Sanitation will return to the board requesting authority to award contract to the most qualified contractor. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, sir. Any questions on number 13? Commissioner Davis. In terms of the estimate cost of this project, uh, that would come later when we prepare the um, scope of work in terms of the projected cost. I understand, according to the board report, 
that we have 6,700 miles of sewer that we have targeted for this particular task. Is that correct? Yes, Commissioner. And so my question is, is there some projected uh, cost to the project, or will we do that when we prepare the subsequent board report? Yes, Commissioner. For more than 10 years, we've been doing this uh, roads control on a limited basis, and we got projection from, you know, what we have done before. And um, for, for uh, the next uh, five years, every year we'll be allocating around uh, 150000 I see. Now, the cost on this particular task is uh, uh, apparently more than what we've paid in the past because the, um, the uh, exterminating substances that we use, uh, as has been uh, stated, uh, tend to be stronger than what we've used in the past. Is that correct? Because it lasts for a longer period of time. It lasts a longer year. So I would suspect that there's a higher cost in that. Is that correct? Or um, not we only have one supplier that are doing this, and their cost is kind of, uh, in terms of uh, inflation, is just barely like, uh, you know, when we started, it's just uh, around seventeen fifty dollars per maintenance hole, but now it's around twenty-two dollars per maintenance hole. But it, that is more than uh, seven years already. I see. And so there's obviously been some improvement in terms of what we use uh, to exterminate. In this case, is that correct? The quality of their uh, insecticide is uh, is still in good, very good. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Any other questions on number 13? I don't have any questions on number 13. Is there a motion on number 13 by Commissioner Davis? Seconded by Commissioner Repenning. Any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 13. Any issues sending 13 forthwith? We will send number 13 forthwith. Thank you, sir. Agenda item number 14, Bureau of Street Services and Bureau of Contract Administration, Council District 11. Contract amendment number one, Trimming Land Company Incorporated tree trimming in the parkways of Manchester Avenue from Lincoln Avenue to Stanmore Drive and certain other streets. Recommending that the board first approve the report with transmittals and execute amendment number one to the Bureau of Street Services contract with Trimming Land Company Incorporated. Secondly, authorize myself or two board members to execute the contract amendment for the project after approval as to form by the city attorney has been obtained. Third, instruct the executive officer of the board to immediately advise Trimming Land to submit their bonds and insurance documents within five working days after the date of notification of approval of the first contract amendment by the board. And fourth, instruct the executive officer of the board to immediately advise Trimming Land that work on the project must start within five working days from the date of issuance of the notice to proceed. Uh, Mr. Tyson, we will start with you. President James, commissioners, city attorney, executive officer, and bureau representatives. Um, the bureau put together eight contracts that were three years long. So it's called the original year plus option year one and two. This contract, however, was only written for one year. So now we're back for the second year, which is the 1617, which is right now. So we've already moved forward with the other eight contracts, and we're here today to uh, hopefully get the board to approve this. It's 3,129 trees, and it's in CD11. One moment, Mr. Tyson. Um, sir, our docent, who do we have with us today? Okay. Great. Thank you. From uh, all over Los Angeles area, Southern California? Great. Great. Welcome, everyone. Um, so we're the, we're the Board of Public Works. Um, we are appointed by the mayor, confirmed by the council, a five-member board with our bureau representatives. Um, the Department of Public Works consists of five um, bureaus and three what I'll call divisions. The five bureaus are the Bureau of Sanitation and the Bureau of Street Services, Bureau of Engineering, Bureau of uh, uh, Street Lighting, and the Bureau of Contract Administration. So we are uh, the city's infrastructure department. Divisions include the Office of Community Beautification, um, the, uh, the Film and Television Office for permitting purposes, as well as the Office of the Petroleum Administrator. Um, so um, we are in many ways, like I said, the city's infrastructure department. 
Also, uh, the, the Bureau of Sanitation serves as an environmental protection agency uh, for the city of Los Angeles as well in partnership with the Department of Water and Power. So thank you all for being here today. Welcome to City Hall and thank you for the work that, uh, that you all are doing. Uh, Commissioner Davis? Uh, one of the tasks and missions of the Board of Public Works is that we have a bureau called Contract Administration that I serve as the liaison with and work with on numerous tasks that they perform for the city. And among those tasks are, uh, are tasks that help to increase employment opportunities. The mayor of the city of Los Angeles has some guiding principles called Back to Basics. And one of those nine uh, guiding principles and visions that he has for the city is that he wants to create employment opportunities in Los Angeles for all of Los Angeles. The Bureau of Contract Administration helps to enact and, and make that vision a reality. And we do so by doing the following things. One, we have a project labor agreement program where we create opportunities for people who want individual jobs. And then we have a series of uh, efforts where we create opportunities for minority contractors, women contractors, veteran contractors, small businesses, and disadvantaged veteran businesses to get an opportunity to compete for work in our city. So the beautiful thing about contract administration is on one hand we inspect what pri uh, prime contractors do and what they do on construction projects and on the other uh, uh, hand we create the opportunity for employment. So that is a very I think critically important function of the Department of Public Works and it's a pleasure to have an opportunity to see people get an opportunity to help make Los Angeles a beautiful place through what we do in this particular bureau. So thank you. Thank you here. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Penning. I just want to take a minute to thank you guys for your service. Um, I know AmeriCorps you know, picks the best and the brightest, meaning that you could all be doing other things with, with, your, with your lives. And the fact that you have chosen to uh, take time and dedicate yourselves to, to public service, um, I think is, is wonderful for all of us. We're, we're going to benefit, I know, in the city from your work with YPI. Um, and I hope that it will inspire you as well to continue. Um, I can tell you firsthand that for me working in city government has been a great way to really have an impact on, um, on people's lives. So I hope that you uh, enjoy your year uh, and find something uh, that uh, inspires you. And thank you so much for your visit here today. Thank you, Commissioner Penny. Commissioner Rivas. Thank you for visiting us today. Um, I've met um, YPI AmeriCorps members in the past um, from when I worked in the San Fernando Valley. And, um, you know, they were amazing. Some of them volunteered um, with my organization that I used to run in, in Pacoima. Um, so thank you for, for your dedication. And I'm glad you're here to learn about um, what we do here at City Hall. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Commissioner Rivas. Mr. Tyson. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Asinto. Thank you, President James. Let me jump in and, and welcome um, all you as well. Having been in the community for a long time and having worked with AmeriCorps uh, volunteers in, in the community and the nonprofit, uh, your work is so uh, valuable and adds great potential to our, our nonprofit. So you're helping keeping the promise and realize the promise. Uh, I happen to work with our Bureau of Engineering, which handles very large projects for our city. Engineering is an underpinning. Uh, a fundamental element of a lot of things that we do. We're working on a great big bridge called the Sixth Street Aqueduct mm -hmm. that'll join the east and west sides too. So we want to keep abreast of that. And we also have a big sidewalk repair program where we're going to try to create better access uh, on all our streets and sidewalks that have been, uh, that need to be repaired. So please, as you go along in the Promise Zone and, and in the neighborhoods, help us to keep our, our, our streets and our city well maintained and uh, again thank you for your visit to to Los Angeles City Hall and hope to see you again soon. Thank you Commissioner Jacinto. Um, uh, Mr. Tyson um, on agenda item number 14 so just by way of um, summary so we get back on the item this is where um, a, a contract amendment number one on tree trimming um, in various portions of Council District 11 correct? Yes sir. Would you give us a summary again so we're back on track? 
the Bureau, uh, for the first time, put together three-year contracts, which is your first year and then your first year option and your second year option. The only council office that we did not, or council district that we not put on a three-year um, contract was CD11. So we had to come back to the board for this one. And this is our uh, one of nine contracts, which all the other eight are, are already being worked on. So we'd like to get this one moving forward. Uh, it's 3,129 trees. And the idea of putting together the three years was so hopefully 17 and 18, the trees will be trimmed in the fiscal year the money's for. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Any questions on um, agenda item number 14? You answered my question regarding the three-year process that we had done on the other council districts. I had forgotten that Council District 11 was one that was an exception to that. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll make a motion that we... Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, um, Dr. Campos. Um, we have two speaker cards on this one. Mr. Herman on number 14. The trouble with trees, the trouble with maintenance. How can you plant trees if you don't have a maintenance plan? Go to fucked up Boyle Heights and see what the maintenance plan's all about. A cycle how many fucked up years you can't go in there and clean up the trees. No, you wait till summer to come and you cut the goddamn trees down so we can bleed in the sun. That's really fucking smart. Now, if you had a crew that would work from year to year, end to end, 360 days in a year, we wouldn't have this problem. You wouldn't have me raging my hands up in the air like some wild tree in the wind. You see, that's the problem with this commission. You should go out and physically see what's happening in Boyle Heights, Lincoln Heights, Highland Park, and then you tell me if you got a maintenance plan. How many millions of dollars you go to waste? The problems you create in Los Angeles. The issue is trees. We're dying already. We're suffocating. Rookie. So I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think I'm right. I don't know what the hell I'm thinking, but I come to a conclusion. I'm fucking goddamn mad at trees. No maintenance. Hire the young kids that came in here. Then we have a plan. I figure it out for you in a minute. You see? So fuck Jose Weezer for tearing all the trees down on Fiesta Broadway and eliminating my future of breathing fresh air. Shove it. Uh, Mr. Spinner, you have a card in on number 14. Sweet. Too many trees cut down. What happens when you drive down Manchester and you wait at the long line? You try to use the bathroom and none of the businesses allow you to use the bathroom. So when we're driving and we need to take a piece, we need trees to be able to get out and take a leak. Yes. You will not provide, what, what do you call those, anti-goops? No, you don't provide pro public toilets like they do in San Francisco. You drive, you don't have a food desert, you have a fucking toilet desert, so we need more trees. More trees to take a piece. Also, toilet paper rolls next to each tree. Yes, keep the toilet paper next to the tree, so homeless people can take a shit. We need the people that are homeless living on the streets in your tents to take a fucking shit and be able to have toilet paper to wipe their ass. And we also need water fountains next to trees so that the homeless can bathe and the homeless can take care of their other needs. None of these are in your budget. Because after all, after they kick the five of you cocksuckers out of here after you're indicted and you're living in a tent, what are you going to take a shit? What are you going to piece? You're going to do it in the street. Do it with trees. Yes, as, as Emily Wright said, there's nothing more beautiful than a tree. So yesterday, well, we were up in Lake Hughes 
There's 800,000 trees. You don't have any fucking trees. You tear them down. Economic savages you are. More trees so you can take a piece. Thank you. 14, uh, my motion is to adopt agenda item number 14. Is there a second? Commissioner Repenning and Commissioner Davis. Any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 14. Any issue sending 14 forthwith? We'll send 14 forthwith. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Um, agenda item number one. Um, we, have an we have four assessment hearings uh, on the agenda this morning. Give me one moment. Oh, adv advisement on assessment hearings. Uh, number one is in Council District 7. Assessment hearing number one, Oro Vista Avenue and Grove Street, Street Lighting Maintenance Assessment District. Uh, City Council hearing set for May 24th, 2017. Um, Mr. Spender, you have a card on agenda item number one. We're all Irish. We're all Japanese. You know, um, at one point, we we're all Moses' people. And especially now more than ever, it's very important to celebrate Jewish heritage. And it's important to celebrate all racial, gender, and cultural diversity. We're on number one, street lighting. Well, district yes, council um, district number seven. well, for the record, the Korean-American councilman just admitted he's Jewish. Okay. So now, CD7, Monica Rodriguez was just elected. Yes. So let's start off the love. Let's show the love to the new councilwoman from CD7 elect. And let's go ahead and deny this assessment until councilwoman elect Monica Rodriguez decides if this is fair for her district because now the pimp, 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 Herb Wesson, which is his real name is Herman Jason Wesson, because he's been running with a false name all this time, is no longer going to terrorize CD7. Imagine having the gangster Herb Wesson taking over your entire council district for nine months, stealing the goddamn money out of your special funds, and you people don't do a goddamn thing. You don't care about Latino people. You don't care about black people. You don't give a shit about anybody that lives in CD7. And one of you guys now is the councilman-elect, the former vice president of this panel. Now, according to Blogspot and Mayor Sam, Monica Rodriguez may not be there long because she apparently used Board of Public Works influence, letterheads, salaries, and staff to campaign for the seat she just won, so her ass may be out of there in about six months. But before she gets termed out by corruption, please allow Monica Rodriguez to review this item and continue this item till after she is sworn into office. Thank you very much. Mr. Herman, you have a card on number one. Yes. So who is Monica Garcia? Wasn't she a part of this commission at one point or one time in matter? That's old business. Oh, no. But I'm talking about Monica Rodriguez, who just won her campaign. So it's Council District 7, Street Lighting District, sir. Right. Well, now that she can uh, address the street lighting to... Uh, blight in the area with more pimps, we know that Herb Wesson will no longer pimp the valley and steal from the public of all those minority African Americans and Hispanics that are busting your tables and feeding your fat asses. So what more can I say regarding CD7 on item one of the assessment hearing for street lighting? Have you been to the valley? Have any of you been to the Valley? They got cafe entertainment, something special on the police commission panel board that we talked about. Yeah, Mr. Diamond, the attorney representing the cafe entertainment, knows about Carnival entertainment like we do. See, we're just entertainers here. We shed light on the real issues of Ms. Rodriguez's new responsibilities in CD7. And unfortunately, to the schmucks who couldn't speak out and shout out, 
against the opposition of Herman Jason Wesson Jr., a.k.a. Herb, we find out that the perjurer may be guilty of stealing more money from CD7. That's something for you to ask Herb Wesson. and something for you to ask Ms. Rodriguez. Uh, Mr. Flamenco on agenda item number one. Ruben Flamenco, Bureau of Street Lighting. Item one pertains to the Oro Vista Avenue and Grove Street Lighting, Lighting District, which we are creating in conjunction with a private development project, three single family residential units. The developers required to install one street light. The lighting district consists of three parcels. Ballots were mailed on April 5th, 2017. Ballots must be received by the, city, by the city clerk's office by Wednesday, May 24th. A notice for item one was mailed to all affected benefiting property owners on May 9th, 2017, informing them that the original scheduled board hearing of May 17th has been rescheduled for today, May 19th. Any questions on agenda item number one? Questions on agenda item number one? Um, uh, no objections on number one that came through, uh, Mr. Flamenco? Correct, no objections. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number one, seconded by Commissioner Davis. Any objection? With that objection, we will adopt agenda item number one. Any issues sending one forthwith? We'll send number one forthwith. Thank you, sir. Um, agenda item number two, um, assessment hearing number two in Council District 12. Van Alden Avenue and Prairie Street. Street Lighting Maintenance Assessment District, City Council hearing uh, set for May 24, 2017. Mr. Flamenco, we'll start with you on number two. Ruben Flamenco, Bureau of Street Lighting. Item two pertains to the Van Alden Avenue and Prairie Street Lighting District, which we are creating in conjunction with a private development project, two single family residential units. The developers required to install one street light. The lighting district consists of five parcels. We have not received any objections to date. Ballots were mailed on April 5th, 2017. Ballots must be received by the city clerk's office by Wednesday, May 24th. A notice for item two was mailed to all affected benefiting property owners on May 9th, 2017, informing them that the original scheduled board hearing on May 17th has been rescheduled for today, May 19th. We are requesting for the board to adopt and forward this item forthwith to city council. Mr. Herman, you have a card on number two. Mr. Herman? Mr. Spindler's card on number two. I'll make a motion that we, any questions, by the way, on number two? I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number two. Seconded by Commissioner Rivas. Any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number two. Any issues sending two forthwith? We'll send number two forthwith. Number three, Council District two assessment hearing. Radford Avenue and Kling Street, Street Lighting Maintenance Assessment District. City Council hearing also set May 24th, 2017. Mr. Uh, Spindler on number three. Mr. Herman on number three. Mr. Flamenco on number three. Item three pertains to the Radford Avenue and Clink Street Lighting District, which we are creating in conjunction with a private development project, a four-story apartment complex with 21 units. The developers required to install one street light. The lighting district consists of two parcels. We have not received any objections to date. Ballots were mailed on April 5th, 2017. Ballots must be received by the city clerk's office by next Wednesday, May 24th. A notice for item three was mailed to all affected benefiting property owners on May 9, 2017, informing them that the original scheduled board hearing of May 17th has been rescheduled for today, May 19th. We are requesting for the board to adopt and forward this item forthwith to city council. Any questions on number three? Any questions on number three? I'll make a motion on number three. Is there a second on number three? Commissioner Asinto, any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number three. Any issues sending three forthwith? We'll send number three forthwith. Final assessment hearing Mr. this morning, Mr. Flamenco, Council District 13, Yucca Street and Las Palmas Avenue, Street Lighting Maintenance Assessment District, Council hearing for May 24th, 2017. Uh, Mr. Herman on number, th uh, number four. Mr. Spindler's car on number four. Mr. Flamenco on number four. Item 4 pertains to the Yucca Street and Las Palmas Avenue Lighting District, which we are creating in conjunction with a private development project, a 23-unit condominium complex. The developers required to install one street light. The lighting district consists of two parcels. We have not received any objections to date. Ballots were mailed on April 5, 2017. Ballots must be received by the city clerk's office by Wednesday, May 24th. A notice for item four was mailed to all affected benefiting property owners on May 9, 2017, informing them that the, board he that the scheduled board hearing of May 17th has been rescheduled for today, May 19th. We are requesting for the board to adopt and forward this item forthwith to City Council. Any questions on agenda item number four? No questions on number four. I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number four. There's a second on number four. Commissioner Sinto. any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number four. Any issue sending number four forthwith? We'll send number four forthwith. Thank you, Mr. Flamenco. 
Agenda item number five, Bureau of Engineering, Council District 11, Task Work Order number two, Budget Increase, Murray Plumbing and Heating Corporation, Mar Vista Recreation Center, Stormwater Best Management Practices Phase two Project, recommending that the board first authorize $325,000 in additional funding and approve a revised construction budget of $732,000 for the project, and secondly, authorize the city engineer to issue task work order number two for an amount not to exceed $325,000 to provide additional requested scope by the Bureau of Sanitation for the project. Mr. Spindler on number uh, five, Mr. Herman's card on number five, Mr. Red on number five. Good morning, morning Ken Red, Bureau of Engineering. Uh, we are here th this morning to uh, seek authority to increase the budget, as you read, by $325,000 and issue a second task work order to uh, Murray, the uh, Cisco 9 contractor, to uh, for some increased scope. Let me give you just a quick background of the project. Um, about uh, in this, the, the first phase of the project was finished in 2011. And the existing project was to divert storm water out of an existing storm drain, uh, clean that up, remove some trash, uh, remove bacteria, treat it for bacteria to help the TMDLs for trash and bacteria, and ultimately to reuse some of that water and then return the unused portion back to the storm drain, helping our TMDLs. At that time, back in 2011, when, when the project was being constructed, we didn't have any regulations for treating storm water to use as irrigation. So rather than hold the whole project up, we went forth with just phase one, which built the tank, diverted the water, treated it, and then put the treated water back in the storm drain, helping our TMDL issues in the Santa Monica Bay. Subsequently, now we have some regulations as sanitations work closely with uh, the county, Department of Health Services, and the, and the regional board to come up with some regulations to use treated storm water. So now we're implementing this. Back in January, or in February of this year, we issued the first task work order. We were here for, and got approval to do that for $407,000. And that was to install the irrigation portion, which consisted of uh, both bubbler and spray sprinklers that will be in installed in nine different zones around the Mar Vista Park, um, a portion of the park anyway. The controls and instrumentation that would go with that, uh, we're going to put in, in mechanical systems, the pumps that would be necessary, backflow devices. Um, we're also installing a desert garden that will provide turf reduction for water conservation and repair some of the sidewalks and concrete paths there in the parkway. That was the first phase that we was issued in February. Subsequently, as we started that work, uh, sanitation has come back to us and asked us to do uh, a few upgrades and repairs of the existing uh, equipment um, so that we, when we finish with construction, we can use it. Uh, namely, the, a couple of the upgrades are uh, install a four-inch diameter drain line from the treatment building to the sewer. Uh, if we have some kind of water that we can't treat, because the only treatment we're doing is for bacteria, if, if we had some kind of shock loading or somebody did an illegal dump or something like that, we would have a way to just put that water back in the sewer, send it to Hyperion to be treated. Um, we're also modifying uh, the supervisory control system. When we built it back in 2011, it was... Uh, going to be monitored and controlled from the Venice pump plant. Now they're going to do that from the Hyperion treatment plant, so we're moving some upgrades to that equipment and moving that over. And then we're just uh, upgrading and finishing some, uh, refurbishing some pumps and other equipment. And that is the request here today for the, the uh, additional um, $325,000. So with that, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer it. Just um, real quick uh, on making the record on uh, the board report, uh, the reference to um, the, um, the evaluation of the facility determining that some of the existing equipment is in need of repair or replacement. So that, is that kind of just, a, uh, just some additional money that's included uh, as a bit of a catch-all for this additional equipment that needs repair? Yeah. Okay. Um, Commissioner Repenning, we'll start with you. Sure. Uh, thank you, Ken. I just have some general questions about the project. And, and um, by the way, I'm sorry, Commissioner Repenning, just uh, for, my, for our colleagues, uh, Hugh Cox is also here from the Bureau of Sanitation. If you have questions for sanitation, go ahead, Commissioner Repenning. Sure. So um, 
so the first phase of this project is, is essentially uh, a water quality um, uh, project. So what we've built out there is currently treating water for bacteria. Yes, that is um, correct. And how is it performing? How did it perform in this last rainy season? I think uh, that's probably sanitation, but I think I'm talking to my colleagues, and I'll let Hugh come up if he wants to. I think that they, their data shows that it treated 100% of the water they captured, Great. got rid of the bacteria. Any additional information on that, Mr. Cox? Good morning. My name is Hugh Cox, sanitation, and I'm uh, confirming what Ken Red just mentioned. Okay. Yes. So the water quality um, uh, element of the project is up and running. We're capturing water. We are treating it for bacteria, and we are, uh, and and so we're ensuring that the that polluted water does not flow off into the ocean. Um, but we're now in the process of going back and adding a second phase, essentially, to the project. Correct. Correct. Uh, and and it, that was originally going to be mm -hmm. in the concept phase, all of one all one project. But we didn't want to hold the water quality portion of the project up when, while we were waiting to work out regulations of using storm, treated stormwater for irrigation. So we're now going to go back and build uh, and the elements of the project that will allow us not just to capture the water and treat it and to release it into the ocean, but to treat it and actually use it for irrigation. Yes. So it, it is now becoming not just a water quality project, but actually a water conservation project as well. Yeah, right. We'll okay. reuse some of the water that we're capturing. We'll clean it up, reuse some of it. And, and the part that we don't re, don't reuse as for irrigation will also then go back to the storm drain as clean, bacteria-free water. And so the decision to wait to build the second element was really about waiting for the state water board to release regulations that would guide us in the use and and how and where and to what specifications the water needs to be treated before we could do something like applying it to grass on a baseball field. That that is correct. Uh, you know, we had there was regulations for treating sewage to reclaimed. Levels. There was there was regulations for reclaiming gray water, but there was no regulations for treating uh, stormwater. And so, you know, it's a, as as we move into these green infrastructure pro projects, we're kind of cutting edge. This is this will be one of the first ones that we've done. We've got a couple other propo projects that are similar, where we're capturing stormwater, cleaning it. They were done similarly, where phase one was done to do the capture and the, and the water quality, and now we're moving forward with the uh, the reuse portion. Now that we have some regulations. How many, how many of these types of projects have we, have we built up until now? The ones, well, we'll use reuse for irrigation. Uh, we've got three that I know of that, we're, that uh, we've completed the phase, the first phase, water quality phase, and we're in the process of, of doing the. And this one was first, This right? one was the first one. So the other two are being built after those regulations were set by the state, and so we have well, more the, clarity. Well, <laughs> kind of the same way that the. They were, they were done in two phases, so the water quality fun are, were done first, yeah, and then now we're doing the finishing up on the, on the reuse. There was a phase one, and now we're doing the phase two of both of those also. So this is a new type of technology. These are very new systems that, you know, cities are building in response to um, state water quality guidelines and now in response to um, state water reuse guidelines as right. well. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Repenning. Commissioner Davis. As we look at <clears throat> the project as it is, I understand phase two will add irrigation to it. As we look at this potential additional uh, funding that will go into the project, what potential do we have in terms of inclusion, business inclusion, minority and women businesses in this new phase that we are back about to be okay. involved in? Okay, good question. Uh, we're using the Cisco contractor and they uh, Due to the urgent nature and relatively when you establish the Cisco contract, they don't have any scope of work. So you And just for the record, Mr. Red, when you talk about using a Cisco contract, that's the construction services contract. It's an acronym. Yes, it doesn't it mean the company Cisco, correct? That, that is correct. Right, because there's sometimes confusion with that, but go ahead. And I appreciate you bringing that up. I've yeah. done this so long that in my mind, I don't think of the company Cisco. I always think of the contractor. Okay. Go it ahead. a construction service contract. Thank you. Um, so there, there's not any set. We have some goals. And as they get task work orders given to them, uh, they uh, do their very best to do that. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I know we do quarterly updates, and I believe that they, they are actually tracking very well. They are about, I think they were over 12%. I, I remember, remember the quarterly update we had just a few weeks, weeks ago, ago, and uh, they were, 
high, they were over the goals in every category except one. Which was emerging business or something right, like that. And it was, it was very close to the goal. So they are tracking my, very my well with doing that. My concern is in terms of the additional work that we uh, have an opportunity to do to improve this project on one hand, that on the other hand, even though we do use Cisco, that there is some effort, some um, opportunities that might exist for women and minority businesses that might be qualified, even though it's a Cisco yes. generated project. That there are definitely some opportunities and we encourage them to outreach and they I think it's important every time we expand a project and every time we grow and develop a project, obviously our goal and our core value is to do the best work that we can and to improve upon our work when we have an opportunity to recognize that. And yet at the same time, I think it's equally important when we do expand these opportunities to improve the quality of our work, that we also improve the diversity of our work as well. So, yeah. And I appreciate knowing for sure that an effort is being made on behalf of those who are in the leadership of the project to, even though they don't necessarily have to, that they are looking towards uh, the inclusion. Okay. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you. Uh, Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Rivas. Um, my question is related to the other two projects you mentioned that are similar. Mm -hmm. um, are they also being done at recreation centers? And yes. yes. Where, like, um, where are one they? Is, Do you know? It, yeah, yeah, Penmar. Uh, is at Penmar Park. They'll actually take water from there that will go to the Penmar golf course and also some of that water will also be treated and sent to the city of Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. They're working with them to do that. Uh, the other one is uh, Temesco Canyon and it is also a park. And if, if these types of projects are successful, like you mentioned, they're new and um, you know, you're still working on um, you know, learning on, uh, you know, and are waiting for these regulations, like do you have plans for doing this in other parts of the city if it's successful? I would hope that we would. Yeah. Uh, these are all Prop O projects and the oh. Prop O bond is, is we're, we're about to the end of oh, okay. developing new projects for that but I certainly hope that we will do that and find more because it, it's exciting to do green infrastructure and, and to reuse and, and treat the water not only for water quality but also to, to help augment our water supply so there's a lot of different things we're looking at. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rivas. Commissioner Repenning. I have one more question, Ken. Um, how much, in, in once we get the irrigation function up and running, on average per month, how much potable water will this save the city once we're using the recycled water? Um, that's an interesting question, and, and so there's a lot of variables that go into it. I think what we've tracked on uh, over the dry season, when the irrigation would be needed the most, we can capture and treat about 10,000 gallons a day. Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure if we're going to use all 10,000 gallons a day for irrigation, because that sounds like a lot to me, because we're, we're only doing a portion of the park okay. uh, on this. But uh, I know that we can capture that much and at least do the water quality and then reuse it on, the, on the, a portion of the park. We're, like I say, these regulations are new. Uh, my guess would be that as we move forward, I would, I would expect that the regulations will change, just like anything else. As, as you start doing something, it, it takes a while to, to find. But we are going to be achieving a significant savings oh, in the amount of drinking water yeah. that we would normally have used to water these fields, correct? Absolutely. Uh, they're, they're doing, and I don't know if they're doing the playing fields, they're doing the, the park area around the tennis courts, and there's some planter boxes that they're doing. Uh, so, but you're absolutely right. Uh, Reckon Parks will receive a benefit of uh, not having to use potable water. The city will reuse, see the benefit of not using potable water will save that. So it, it's, a good, it's a good project all the way around. Great. Well, these are the types of projects that will help prepare our city for, for future droughts. I know we had a rainy winter this winter, but we, we know that the dry conditions are very likely to come back again. Okay. And these are the types of projects that really help us um, prepare for that. Thank you, Ken. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Repenning. Uh, any further questions? No further questions. Is there a motion on agenda item number five? Uh, Commissioner Repenning, seconded by Commissioner Davis. Uh, any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number five. Thank you, Mr. Red. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Any issue sending agenda item number five forthwith? We'll send agenda item number five forthwith. Uh, thank you, everyone. Agenda item number six, Council District 11, authority to sole source Proposition O Argo Drain Subbasin Facility Project, recommending that the board authorize the city engineer to sole source DN tanks 
for the construction of the pre-stressing and seismic components of the pre-stress tank for the project and authorize the city engineer to negotiate a price agreement for an amount not to exceed $1,600,000 with DN tanks for the above referenced work, which will be subcontracted by the general contractor awarded the project. Uh, Mr. Herman, you have a card on number six. Mr. Herman, Mr. Spinner on number six. Uh, John Salden on number six. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, John Saldine with the Bureau of Engineering. Sorry, Mr. Saldine. I knew I would. Saldine hey. one day, Saldine no the next problem. day. No got problem. you. Got you today, uh, Mr. Saldine. Go ahead, yeah, sir. That's, that's my uh, Saldine. That's my Swedish pronunciation. Okay. Um, so uh, I am uh, uh, with the Bureau of Engineering. I am requesting approval for a sole sourcing, a sole sourcing item with your board today regarding the Argo Drain Subbasin Facility Project. And this is another one of our PROPO projects. It is and is part of the Clean Water Bond program as well. And the project is being completed in partnership with Los Angeles World Airports. Briefly, uh, the project assists the city to meet stormwater pollution requirements in the area of the Argo drainage basin, uh, which includes areas of Westchester, Playa del Rey, and a, and a, a large portion of Los Angeles World Airport, uh, LAX. The project consists of diversion, treatment, and capture of stormwater from the Argo Ditch before it discharges to Dockwater State Beach. Uh, the project components consist of a stormwater diversion structure in the Argo Ditch on LAX property, a pipeline from that diversion structure to a pump station on Falmouth Avenue, followed by a clarifier to remove pollutants from the stormwater and followed finally by an 8.1 million gallon infiltration tank to collect the stormwater and allow it to infiltrate into the ground to capture the stormwater. The entire project budget is $37 million, consisting of $30 million of Prop O funding and $7 million of, of uh, the airport funding. We are currently nearly complete with the design phase. Uh, we identified a sole sourcing situation that requires your approval before proceeding to finalize the design. So the item for your consideration today is approval to sole source DN tanks for construction of the pre-stressed and seismic components of the 8.1 million gallon underwater pre-stressed circular concrete tank for an amount not to exceed $1.6 million. A pre-stressed circular concrete tank was selected for this project because of its resistance to corrosion, its overall lower cost, and its resistance to the seismic forces that we have in Southern California. Uh, the tank is required to be underground uh, to preserve open space above uh, for uh, future recreational uses proposed for this site. And finally, DN Tanks is the only contractor meeting the experience required to perform the specialty work of this seismic reinforcing. Thank you, Mr. Saldine. So just so the record is clear on this, so the, the sole source request is for the $1.6 million portion of the $37 million project that you broke down with $30 million in Prop O funds and $7 million from Los Angeles World Airports, correct? That's correct. Okay. And the, the justification for the sole source, are they essentially operating with, was there a patent here? You know, I believe there wasn't a, pat, a patent early on uh, that, that uh, they did have, but it has expired. So the patent's expired. However, this is still the only entity with, if you will, the experience um, expertise, experience, work from what was left from that patent so to the point that in the marketplace from the Bureau's research, this is the only shop in town that, that can do the work that we need done, which would in essence, in practical purposes, continue the patent. 
That's correct. Uh, and we have checked with the Department of Water and Power. They, they confirmed that, um, and that is uh, generally known. There, there were two companies, actually, DYK and a second company that could do this work uh, until about 2011. Those two companies combined, and, and now there really is only one, this single company that can build these underground, this pre-stressed circular concrete uh, reinforcing, the seismic reinforcing for these concretes is a very technical and specialty work that this is the only company that can do that now. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jordan, regarding the justification for the sole source, is the city attorney satisfied? Yes, we've discussed the matter fairly extensively with the Bureau and I'm satisfied that they've really done their due diligence and homework on this. So we have no problem with the sole source. Okay. Commissioner Asinto. That was my question, President James. Okay. Just the uh, justification of the sole source. The Argo project is an important project. John, thank you for the briefing. It, it captures so much storm water from a very large area. So that's 8.1 million gallons is a big tank. So, and that's a big part of the scope of work too. So appreciate the report. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, Commissioner Asinto. Is there a motion on number um, six uh, by Commissioner Asinto? Uh, uh, I'll second it. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number six. Any issue sending number six uh, forthwith? We'll send number six forthwith. Thank you, Mr. Saldine. We appreciate it. Agenda item uh, number seven, task order solicitation SN64, CBNI Environmental and Infrastructure, recommending that the board authorize the director of the Bureau of Sanitation or his designee to issue a notice of award to CBNI Environmental and Infrastructure from the on-call consultant list Secondly, approve a total budget authority of $2 million. That includes approximately a 16.25% contingency to fund the residential food scrap in sync proposal pilot program and approve the term of engagement for the task order solicitation for 18 months from the date that the Bureau of Sanitation issues the notice to proceed to CBNI. This task order solicitation also includes an option for a 12 month extension contingent upon the board's approval of an amendment to the original on-call contract. Mr. Herman has a card on number seven. Mr. Herman, number seven. Mr. Spindler, number seven. Ms. Romino, I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Romano, number seven. Rowena, how are you? Good, Good to see you. Thank you, President. Good morning, President James, Commissioners Repenning, Jacinto, Rivas, and Davis. Um, Bureau Representative, City Attorney, and Executive Officer, Rowena Romano with LA Sanitation. So this morning we're requesting the authority to notice an issue of award to CBNI um, for the task order solicitation TOS SN64 for the residential food scrap in sync disposal pilot program. So this pilot program is in line with the mayor's 2015 sustainability plan and the city's solid waste integrated resources plan to achieve the 90% landfill diversion. Um, and, it, and in those plans it included food waste pilot programs. And this is one of those pilot programs that LA Sanitation will be implementing. And we will be assessing the um, environmental, economical, and operational challenges and benefits on the existing residential solid waste collection, as well as the um, wastewater conveyance system and the effects over at the Hyperion Water, Reclam water Reclamation Plant. The task for the TOS SN64 includes um, project management, demographics and informa um, informational maps, outreach and behavioral surveys, providing residents with a new in-sync food waste disposer, um, conducting waste characterizations on the refuse bin, conducting um, closed captioning TV survey analysis on the conveyance system, wastewater sampling and characterization, bench scale modeling for food waste degradation, um, wastewater reclamation modeling, and also progress and final reports. The TOS was issued back in June 9, 2016 to all 25 firms on the on-call consultant list. Six firms attended, attended the pre-proposal meeting, of which only two firms then proposed, CB&I and CH2M. The other four firms were Black & Veatch, Brown & Caldwell, Corolla Engineers, and CDM Smith. We received from Black & Veatch and Brown and & Caldwell that they will not be actually proposing and Carollo and CDM Smith have decided to put their interest in subcontracting with the other proposers. Um, then of the two proposals, the evaluation team selected CB&I based on their proposal, their interview, and the follow-up questions. CBI demonstrated a clear understanding of the objectives and scope of work and demonstrated the capability, knowledge, and experience to conduct the 
tasks that I had just outlined. Um, CB and I also conducted the um, business inclusion program, and their proposal includes a 28.83% MIBI, 45.88% SVE, and 21.17% EBE. The subconsultants will be conducting plumbing involving the removal and installation of the um, in sink food waste disposer, conducting public outreach and the behavioral surveys to obtain um, quality qualifiable you know, feedback from the residents and also the wastewater sampling and waste characterization to get more qualitative information for this program. Um, so I'll take any questions. Great. Thank you, Ms. Romano. Um, Commissioner Repenning. Hi, Rowena. Good morning, Commissioner. Um, so this project is one of a, a number of fronts that we're moving forward on um, and really trying to address food waste in our city. Um, we obviously uh, want to removed food waste from our landfill as part of our, our SWERP, yes. um, Solid Waste Integrated <laughs> Resources integrated waste Plan. Management plan yes. uh, but we also have a mandate from the state as well. Yes. Um, because when we send food to the landfill, what happens? So when we um, send food waste to the landfill, it's organic matter and it gets um, uh, put into the landfill, it creates an anaerobic environment for the food to then break down and produce methane gas. Um, landfills today um, engineered are called engineered landfills. They have a landfill capturing, um, landfill gas capturing system, but there's also always the potential for that landfill gas to just burp out of the landfill, so to speak, and, and the methane goes out into the environment, atmosphere. So, so uh, the food uh, in our landfills is actually um, causing a lot of air quality problems because it is generating, because it breaks down more quickly than the rest of the waste that we're sending there, correct? You're, you're correct, Commissioner. So, you know, as we're, as we're looking at a larger kind of comprehensive plan to address um, food waste diversion in our city, we're looking at, you know, food recovery where we can Yes. use food that's still edible and get it into the hands of people in need. You're right. Um, this is an example of how can people in their homes who they may not have a backyard to compost, um, they're, they're ad addressing food scraps that are no longer edible. Um, what can they do with it? Rather than putting it uh, in their black bin, they can now use their incinerator to, to yes. grind it up, send it into our sewer system, yes. and then what happens to it? Then once it's in the sewer system, it's gonna be sent over to, um, conveyed over to the wastewater treatment plants where then at the wastewater treatment plants, we have um, our primary, secondary, tertiary um, treatment. And in, and in that process, um, the food waste is then either converted to CO2, if it gets aerated, um, if that food waste ends up, there's always what we call residual or sludge, it ends up in anaerobic digesters. Anaerobic digesters then again, similar to what happens in the landfill, produces methane gas, but then it's in a controlled environment where we can then capture that landfill gas and use that as renewable energy. Um, okay, so the, this, this location of this pilot is gonna be it's going to be sent to Hyperion, correct? I'm, I'm sorry, yes, I did miss that. The pilot project will be in West LA in the Playa Vista area, and we're looking at piloting a route of 519 homes. So we have our DIG up there, and so we're going to be able to pull, pull energy off of yes, the food. The, um, the pilot pro program itself is small compared to the rest of the city, and part of the pilot program will then be able to use the data that we get receive from the pilot and then sort of look at it as a citywide basis to see how much more organics is going, is conveyed into the wastewater treatment system and then possibly how much more um, renewable energy the, the gas can be produced. Okay, so I see some young people sitting in our room today and I know you've heard a lot of interesting things being said and, and shouted at times, um, but this is one that I hope you'll pay attention to because it's really uh, the future, it's the next frontier for recycling food. Instead of sending it to our landfill to cause these air quality issues, we're actually now gonna be using it as a source of renewable energy to uh, help get us off of carbon. So sure. thank you, no that's problem. all I thank have. You. Thank you, Commissioner Repenning. Um, Commissioner Rivas? In this area that you selected for the pilot, um, do we know if they, you know, how frequently they currently use their incinerators, or 
is that what, or is that a reason they were selected because they're not using it? Um, the the reason why the area was selected was um, its proximity to, to Hyperion. To Hyperion, okay. um, as Commissioner Repenning um, noted. Um, but from the pilot program, we'll also do a, a preliminary survey to kind of get a gauge of how much um, residents are using their food waste disposer currently because each home or already has most likely already has one of those but whether or not they're using it is a question that we will ask them um, and then the public outreach will encourage them to use it more frequently telling them what types of food waste they could put down um, you know the drain you know, fruits vegetables your leftovers um, also could be you know small bones like small fish bones um, and coffee grinds but then also teaching them how to use their food waste disposer properly. I think a lot of people, you know, try to stuff food down there and then they get issues and then they're like, I don't want to use it anymore. So this is going to be a lot more education about how to use it properly and then we can then determine um, how much food waste through the surveys, you know, if they, um, their, their feedback in using it, whether they like to use it now, they figured out how to use it properly, or they're like, no, I don't want <laughs> to, I still don't want to touch it. So that's what the um, pilot program will have, the results will, will show, to, show to us. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you, Commissioner Rivas. Commissioner Jacinto. Thank you, President James Arena. Good to see you. This is a very interesting pilot program. You know, it's concentrated around uh, Playa Vista, so we're going to get kind of a concentrated demographic around that. Yes, and sir. as we seek to, to uh, implement this citywide, it'd be interesting to see what variations, um, what trends are here in this certain population socio-demographic and understanding that our city is much more diverse yes, socio-demographically and uh, economics, all, the, all those different strata. And if we're going to be able to expand this out, because I think this is very interesting, I, I, don't, I totally support it. Uh, I'm interested in the behavioral aspects of us getting a sampling. Uh, I understand that we have to go to Hyperion with this and it's close by. Mm -hmm. I think if we want to get a, a deeper dive into the city of Los Angeles, then we would want to consider a more diverse geographic spread. Yes, sir, and, I, and I, ag I agree with you. I think once we get the results from here, we would then make a recommendation whether to then expand it to other portions of the city and then get the social economical or the behavior differences that, that you are speaking about. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sinto. Anything further? Is there a motion on this agenda item? By Commissioner Rivas. Seconded by Commissioner Repenning. Um, any objection to agenda item number seven? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number seven. Any issues sending number seven forthwith? We'll send number seven forthwith. Thank you. Have a nice weekend, Roy. Agenda item number eight, a final closeout change order for the Central Los Angeles Recycling and Transfer Station, that's the Clark Station, Stormwater and Safety Improvements Project. Recommend that the board first authorize the Bureau of Sanitation to issue the final closeout change order to the general contractor, Ford EC Incorporated. Um, Adriana Barrio, good morning. Good morning, my name is Adriana Barrio. I'm with LA Sanitation. Uh, so LA San is requesting that the board grant us the authority to issue the final closeout change order number 56, which is the final step in terminating 40C's contract with the city for the Clark Stormwater and Safety Improvements Project. On November 30th, um, 2016, the Board of Public Works approved the termination of 40C's contract. On December 19, 2016, 40C submitted a claim to the city for unrecovered field and office overhead expenses due to the contract termination, extended field overhead costs due to contract time extension, and miscellaneous pending and, and uh, undisputed change orders. With the help of 40C's professional approach and good faith efforts, we were able to smoothly resolve this claim. This final closeout change order constitutes the final settlement agreement between the contractor and the city. It documents the terms for closing this project, including the settlement of all outstanding change orders, the request for equitable adjustment and claim associated with the termination of the contract by the city, contractor not at fault, in the amount of $375,000, and compensable time extension. 
This change order also credits the city for, for the unexpended bid item allowance amounts in the contract and makes final quantity adjustments to the contract's lump sum bid items. So once again, LA Sanitation is requesting that the board grant us the authority to issue the final closeout change order, number 56. Any questions on agenda item number eight? You know, I, I, I know, uh, Ms. Borrello, that this has been around a bit, and I remember the uh, hearings that we held here some months ago. And, you know, I've got 25 years of litigation experience behind me, settling cases and such. Um, I would um, I would take this settlement, um, given the, the, the claims that were outstanding. I think it's a good settlement for the city. Okay, thank um, you. So without any questions, I'll, um, I'll make um, a motion that we adopt agenda item number eight. A seconded by Commissioner Repenning and Davis. Any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number eight. Any issues saying number eight forthwith? We'll send number eight forthwith. Thank you thank for you the so work much. on this. Mm -hmm. Agenda item number nine. Uh, Bureau of Street Services, Council District 3, requested tree removal at 7108 North Amigo Avenue, recommending that the board certify that the board has reviewed and considered the information in the addendum to the mitigated negative declaration for the project at 7108 North Amigo Avenue, and find the information contained therein appropriately addresses the requested tree removals. Uh, that Mr. Tyson will confirm that for us. Secondly, Find that the project will not have a significant environmental effect under the above described addendum to the mitigated negative declaration as the imposition of the mitigation measures described in the MND and incorporated herein as project conditions. There is no substantial evidence that the proposed project will have a significant effect on the environment pursuant to the city's environmental guidelines and is in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act. Third, find that the project's conflict with any local policies or ordinances protecting biological resources, such as tree preservation policies or other ordinances, is less than significant with the incorporation of mitigation measures in the addendum to the MND under biological resources. Fourth, adopt the addendum to the MND. Fifth, specify that the Bureau of Street Services Urban Forestry Division at 1149 South Broadway is custodian of the documents and other material that constitute the record of proceedings upon which the board's decision is based. And six, to approve the request for a no fee tree removal permit for four bottled trees. Tree replacements are required. Mr. Tyson, not bottled brush trees, but bottled trees this time. Go ahead, sir. That's, that's correct. They're called brachiochite. Well, that's the technical name. I never try to pronounce those. It's always easier with bottle tree. That's right. <clears throat> Amigo Casa LLC developer have combined two properties and are currently constructing a 25-foot, I'm sorry, 25-unit apartment building at 7108 North Amigo Avenue at the intersection of Amigo Avenue and Galt Street as part of a city planning case. The subject property is located in the community of Reseda and consists of two joint lots for a total area square foot area of approximately 20,196 square feet. Contained in the entitlements are Bureau of Engineering requirements, including street widening and other related street improvements. Mr. Goodman, property owner representative, applied to the Bureau of Engineering for a construction class B permit to widen the street as part of the conditions to construct the project. The Bureau informed Mr. Goodman that the required street widening may necessitate street tree removals. Therefore, Mr. Goodman contacted the Bureau of Street Services so that the site could be inspected by a certified arborist. A Bureau arborist inspected the location on March 22, 2017. The inspection revealed one tree that is missing on Amigo Avenue, which is a bottle tree, and four bottle trees growing on the Galt Street side of the address. The contractor apparently removed one tree without a permit and prior to the Bureau inspection. The contractor states the missing tree fell during a wind event and instructed their contractor to remove the tree, but failed to notify the Bureau of the incident nor request a permit to remove the alleged fallen tree. The Bureau also has no record of receiving any emergency request for a tree removal at or adjacent to the location, therefore, the tree was removed without a permit and without knowledge of the Bureau. The developer was informed that they will be required to install larger trees and post cash bonds to ensure the survival of all on-site and off-site replacement trees for removal of the street tree without a permit.
Michael Owens, third council district office in the community forest advisory committee was informed of the tree removal request on March 23rd, 2017. Notice of the proposed tree removals were physically posted on the subject trees on March 21st, 2017. Proposed tree removals were also included on the Bureau of Street Services tree removal notification system. The applicant, this is the condition, the applicant shall plant two 36 inch box size pink trumpet trees in front of the address and four 36 inch box size pink trumpet trees on the Galt Street side. Additionally, the applicant shall plant four 36 inch box size jacaranda trees off site in the service median island located on the north side of Lassen Street between Yolanda Avenue and Geyser Avenue. One tree is to be planted across from 18619, 18625, 18631, and 18637 Lassen Street to replace the removed trees. The survival of all the tree replacements shall be guaranteed for a period of three years by bond. If the board approves the tree removal, the tree removal permit shall be issued by the Bureau upon notification of the Bureau of Engineering that the bond has been posted. In conjunction with the project's landscape architect or tree expert, the applicant shall be responsible to ensure the tree removal permit tree replacement conditions are in compliance. The Bureau shall be notified no later than five days after the completion of the tree replacements. A Bureau arborist will make arrangements to visit the site and approve the tree replacements as being in compliance with the permit conditions within five working days of the notification of planting completion. Due to the uh, widening of the street and on Amigos uh, Avenue side, it's an uh, unimproved side. There isn't a curb, so they have to install curbs. And once they widen the street, the uh, curb will basically be where the tree, the trees are located. So the trees cannot sustain those kind of impacts. And that's why we're here today to request the uh, board consider the permit for the removal of the four. And, um, one question, Tim. Um, the uh, the board report indicates that it's a fee permit. The agenda says it's a no fee permit. Would you just be clear up that for the record here? This is going to be a fee permit. Yeah. Um, uh, also, just to clarify, Mr. President, from yes. Campos Executive Officer, recommendation number six also in the report indicates a no fee. So yeah. um, as you deliberate, uh, consideration to adopt this as amended to correct that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any questions on agenda item number uh, co uh, number nine, Commissioner Jacinto? Thank you, President James. Tim, you know, the docu photo documentation clearly shows that the widening of the street, there's no sidewalk there. It's unimproved. So therefore, uh, it, it is unfortunate uh, that we have to... Um, uh, take those uh, those trees out. There are it's a replacement of ten. Is that yes. A total of ten and, yes. and six on site uh, and four off of the median. Correct. Uh, I think it's. Hold on. You said four plus two and then four. Yes, four four jacaranda trees in the median. So six at the site, two on the amigo side, and four on call. Is that median cl uh, located close by? Close by. Thank you. They'll be watering these trees for a period of three years and they'll be bonded so that if the tree actually uh, anything causes its demise, they'll have to replace it and start the three years over. Understood. All three years. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jacinto. Um, I don't have any other questions on this one. Uh, we, once we get the fee issue um, cleared up, we'll do that by amendment. So without any other questions, I'll make a motion that uh, we adopt agenda item number nine as amended for all of the appropriate areas to correctly reflect that it is a fee permit. Um, is there a second on that motion by Commissioner Sacinto and Davis? Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number nine. Any issue sending it forthwith? We'll send it forthwith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tyson. Congratulations, by the way, on your acknowledgement well deserved in Council District 12 the other night. I would like to say I didn't get a chance to say anything uh, the other evening, but uh, it's a direct reflection of all the employees of the Urban Forestry Division. It's not of me. Well, Tim, you all have worked really hard in the, the, the last four years that I know because I've been sitting here that long that on uh, 
on urban forestry policy and urban forestry reform and in partnership with the environmental community and the environmental lawyers uh, to get where we are today and the community is better for it and, and we hear that regularly. So thank you for your hard work on it. Not, not easy, by the way. And thanks to the board for your support. Um, agenda item, let me figure out where we are. Um, that was nine, we continued 10. Are, do we just have the oral reports left, Mr. Campos? Oral reports and also the general public comment. Okay, well let's go ahead and call general public comment. Mr. Spindler, you have a card for general public comment? Mr. Herman has a card for general public comment. So we'll close general public comment. Now we'll go to the, um, uh, the oral report. Uh, Mr. Roch on Office of Community Beautification, we'll start with you. Mr. Spindler on number 18. Mr. Roch on, I'm sorry, Mr. Herman on number 18. Mr. Roch on number 18. Now we got a little bit of this, well we didn't entirely the other night, but, but you a little bit of it. Yeah, a little bit of it to rehash from the Just other night. Just a couple of nights oh. ago, but go ahead sir, while the, the record is rolling. Okay. Paul Roch, Director of the Office of Community Beautification, uh, with a brief quarterly report or update on some of the activities of our, our office. Um, I'll start with the graffiti abatement program. Uh, so for the current fiscal year from uh, July 1st up to today, OCB contractors have abated 29.2 million square feet of graffiti. That puts us on a pace uh, to remove approximately 33.5 million square feet by the end of the current fiscal year. Just as a matter of reference, last year we removed 27.5 million square feet. So we're actually on a, a pace to remove about 18% more graffiti this year um, than last year. Um, for the current year, OCB contractors have uh, completed 63.5% of the requests for graffiti abatement within 24 hours or less and 73% of those requests are completed within 48 hours or less. Now, this is approximately a 10% increase from the previous fiscal year um, as well. And that's 10% increase in the positive direction, In correct? the positive yeah. direction, right. Okay. Last year, uh, we were at about 55% of the requests being done in 24 hours or less, and we're up to 63.5%. Uh, um, and I believe that is a, a reflection of uh, in, uh, budget increase that occurred for this uh, year that allowed us to put um, approximately uh, 10 or 11 more graffiti abatement crews out on the streets. Um, and obviously the more crews we have, uh, the more graffiti they're able to remove both proactively and also responding to requests for service. Uh, leading into the public right-of-way cleanup, uh, which is also performed by OCB contractors, uh, so far for the current fiscal year, so from July 1st up through today, OCB contractors have cleaned over 4,000 locations of weeds, trash, litter, and bulky items on a citywide basis. They've collected over 111,000 trash bags that they've filled with debris, litter, weeds, etc., um, and also collected over 14,000 bulky items from along the public right-of-way. As far as volunteer projects, work with uh, community volunteers for the current fiscal year, OCB has uh, coordinated and supported 324 volunteer events. For the total amount last year was 306, so we're already about you know, 20 events more than we had last year. Uh, we've worked with uh, and supported 26,501 volunteers which is already about 5,000 more volunteers than last year. So um, the volunteer projects are stepping up too, showing a, an increase in the uh, productivity and the amount of work being performed by residents of the city of Los Angeles. As far as the sidewalk repair incentive program, uh, 954 total applications have been received to date. Of those, 637 offers have been made and approximately half of the offers have been uh, accepted by the uh, people submitting those applications. Sidewalk construction through the rebate program, uh, th 33 locations have actually been completed to date, and the total amount paid out is 
$236. Just to highlight a few other items uh, that OCB's uh, been, been active with, uh, we've been participating with the San Fernando Valley Coalition on Gangs, uh, working with Commissioner Rivas on the uh, North Hills Strategic Initiative, which will focus on uh, blight reduction in the North Hills area. Um, participated in the Earth Day Fair a few weeks ago at Exposition Park, the Council District 7 Resource Fair, and uh, that's a brief synopsis of some of our activities uh, recently. Great, thank you, uh, Mr. Raj. Commissioner Rivas. Thank you, Paul, for um, this great update. I'm excited that all your numbers are going up, and I was particularly impressed with um, the number of volunteers, the increase, what you said, if I'm correct, right. 5,000 more just in this Just, just so year? far this year, so still with another, you know, what, five, six weeks left in the fiscal year, we're at about 5,000 more volunteers than all of last fiscal year, wow. so. Was what, what do you think that's due to? Was there more outreach? Well, I, you know, I think it's a, it's a number of things. Obviously, as people become kind of aware of the services, and even though these are services that, that have been being offered for almost the past 30 years as yeah. far as helping coordinate cleanups and things like that, um, there's still a lot of people that are just finding out about it. A lot of groups. Um, also, council offices have been real active this year in uh, going out and working with their groups and coordinating events. Uh, neighborhood councils are uh, doing that, especially with the Clean Streets Challenge. Um, that obviously had a, a impact in the number of events and number of volunteers that were out there too. So I think it's all those different levels, you know, whether it's, it's driven through the, the local community residents, through the council offices, through public works programs, through the council offices, it all kind of comes together and is showing a, an increase in people being willing to get out there and do some work. Oh, that's great. I'm excited and hopefully um, next week as part of Public Works Week, um, we're planning a cleanup um, in CD6 and North Hills area that you just mentioned um, with a school nearby that also wants to get involved and didn't know that we provide these services. Um, I run into a lot of people that are also surprised and that the city provides all of the materials and tools needed to clean up a community for free. You know, yeah. they think they have to pay. And, and I know that, you know, our office has made a dedicated effort this year to get out to a lot of the neighborhood council meetings and community groups and just inform them. I know public works commissioners are out there all the time. I get calls all the time like, oh, Commissioner, you know, so-and-so was at our meeting and they said we can, you know, get some paint to cover graffiti or get some trash bags or whatever it is. So, um, you know, I mean, those, you know, when we get out there as a city and we're telling them about um, support that we have for their project, it does kind of light that fire a little bit to let them know that there is support through the city. Yeah, thank you. And one more question related to bulky items. Um, I'm not clear whether our contractors or the OCB contractors are responsible for bulky item pickups? Like, do they make rounds kind of like they do with graffiti? Um, or is that, when is it LA Sanitation and when is it OCB contractors' yeah, so responsibility? Yeah, so sanitation is, is the primary if somebody reports a bulky item or they have their trucks that are driving around and doing all that. Our contractors are primarily doing the weed and litter abatement. But in a lot of cases, they're working along a parkway or a median island where there's weeds, trash, and also, you know, maybe some mattresses or a couch or whatever it is. And we don't want them to, to do that weed abatement work and then just leave the other trash behind. So they will pick that up um, as they're doing that work. Um, they do also, as they're driving maybe from median to uh, median island or location to location, if they see, you know, something sitting on the parkway and they have room in their truck, they'll stop and grab that too. Um, but, but they're a, a supplement to the work that's performed by the Bureau of Sanitation, which is the primary um, bulky item department, what guru, whatever we want to call it, uh, throughout the city of Los Angeles. Service provider. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Paul. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Rivas. Commissioner Jacinto. Thank you, Mr. Raj, thank you uh, for a great report, quarterly report to the um, OCB staff, 
uh, the contractors, all the, all the nonprofits that we have working alongside, you know, the, what jumps out is civic citizen engagement. And as, as you said, all the different, um, the uptick in the amount of events to date really represents that sort of back to basics that we all got to do this together. And so when citizens are out there um, organizing and finding out that we have more cleanup events, that's an indication that we're trending in the right way. Uh, and that's how we're going to fulfill the mayor's agenda of a livable, sustainable city is if we do it ourselves, if we are uh, engaged to our maximal potential. So thank you for a great report, Paul. Thank you, Commissioner Sinto. Commissioner Davis. I thank you now. as well, Paul, for a great report. Your task is a never-ending task. We always have cleanup to do and we'll always have it to do. So it's a very valued task that you perform for us, and I'm glad to see that we are sustaining our collaborations with the council offices, and in many ways they help to drive communities around using the services as yep. well. So always what we do in... Uh, the Office of Community, uh, co uh, Community Beautification is critically important to our operation here in Public Works. So we look forward to future reports. And again, I'm very happy that we are uh, sustaining our great relationship with the council offices. I think that's kind of the core where we can drive the interests among city uh, nonprofits and community groups who also want to participate. And that really is, I mean, our, our bottom line, I mean, at the CD12 meeting the other night, the word partnerships was brought up a lot. And that really is, um, you know, how we look at things, is forming partnerships with all the council offices, with the different public works bureaus, with various community groups throughout the city of Los Angeles, and just trying to bring, you know, everybody together, uh, which is fairly easy to do on the aspect of cleaning up their communities and the different ways to go about doing that. Great, thank you. Mr. Campos? Nice. Just jump in, Paul. Just wanted to publicly recognize you and also uh, give a shout out to you and your leadership. Um, and also for working with me and our, our president um, during the budget deliberation process. As most of yeah. us are aware, yesterday the city council adopted our budget for fiscal year 17 18, and there was a couple of um, things that we needed to swiftly respond to. One is supporting our mayor to hit our new goal for next fiscal year to increase our graffiti abatement to 90%. So we have a, a big challenge ahead of us, but I know, Paul, with your leadership there in the Office of Community Beautification, along with our support of our commissioners, we will get there. Um, in addition to that, we quickly and swiftly responded back to our Clean Streets initiative uh, using our, our small contractors uh, through this Office of Beauty, uh, Community Beautification. So we were able to to restore that funding so thank you for um, being nimble thank you for swiftly uh, responding to that and for working with me and president james through that process thank you dr campus thank you thank yes. you mr Raj. so the oral report will be received thank you while you're on this while we're on the subject of council district 12 don't i recall mr red that you were standing up there honored on was i am i right were you, you weren't oh i'm so embarrassed what's that right yeah. Didn't you the other night? Oh. Oh, okay. Well, see, uh, the, you, you leave such an impression yeah, that, that, was that Mr. I just Drucker. assumed that you were one of the honorees. <laughs> I believe that was Mr. Drucker, Neil Drucker. Oh, it was Neil Drucker. That's right. It was Neil Drucker. But were you there the other night? Okay. <laughs> well, I was there the other night. <laughs> I know you, you can't tell from my... <laughs> my memory of the other night. But, uh, well, you're deserving anyway, Mr. Red. So nice job today, by the way. Uh, let's move to agenda item number 19. Uh, composting and mulching operations, a recycling update from the Bureau of Sanitation. Mr. Cruz, thank you for your patience today. Not a problem. I don't think I can say this morning anymore as of one minute ago. Good morning. How are you doing today? Well, good afternoon, sir. <laughs> I'm here to give the annual compact, uh, compost and mulching uh, report for uh, the Bureau of Sanitation. Uh, green waste and mulching uh, compost program. The Bureau collects uh, around 1,800 tons per day of yard trimmings from approximately 750,000 residents. Uh, the majority is delivered to private contractors for processing and delivery to end users. Although 400 tons a day is processed, to three bureau, uh, processed through three Bureau uh, facilities, the, mulch, uh, the Harbor Mulching Facility which receives and produces 800 to 100 tons a day. Uh, Bureau collected 
residential green waste from San Pedro and the harbor areas, as well as West LA. Our Griffith Park composting facility, which receives uh, and composts a mix of green waste from Griffith Park, biosolids from Hyperion, wastewater treatment plant, and animal waste from the Los Angeles Zoo. Our Lopez Canyon Environmental Center, which receives and processes up to 320 tons a day of uh, bureau collected green waste with 100 tons of manure from the East Valley Collection uh, District uh, area and 100 tons a day of uh, bulky uh, brush from private haulers. Uh, we produce uh, high quality products that are provided to large organizations such as uh, the Los Angeles Unified School District, community gardens, local farmers and city residents and businesses all for free of charge. Uh, so far this fiscal year, we produced 44,000 tons of raw mulch, 10,000 tons of partially uh, composted mulch, and 2,000 tons of full compost. The raw and semi-composted mulch uh, product are given away uh, to city residents and farmers. Uh, we currently have 11 giveaway sites throughout the city. Uh, for exact locations, we have it on the website at www.lacity.sand.org. And our goal is to have at least one uh, drop-off area in each council district. Uh, and some of the food compost products uh, we produce are used by the Department of Rec and Parks. And the remaining used to be sold in bulk until yesterday. Uh, we are starting to give our compost away that they pay for uh, for free now to residents. That will be the bagged 1.5 uh, uh, liter bags. All right. We also partner with the city plants programs. We supply bulk or bagged mulch and compost to many uh, tree planting and tree giveaway events. Whenever possible, we participate in environmental education fairs and share our programs with yard open houses, Mayor's Day of Service, Earth Day, and other uh, service activities. As a result of these programs, uh, our uh, awareness of the residents is getting uh, very high and the demand is literally skyrocketed. And we can hardly keep up with the material to get it out fast enough. And just recently in March, uh, we launched our free residential mulch program. So we're res uh, re uh, re uh, delivering to residents now. They can request two options, five cubic yards and two and a half cubic yards of mulch, which will be delivered uh, free on a first come first serve basis. The program has been successful. We made over 150 deliveries so far with well over 400 scheduled to be delivered. In addition to our current backyard composting classes, we hold at Lopez Canyon uh, Environmental Ed Education Center on the second Saturday of the month. We also teamed up with uh, Pacoima Beautiful to add more classes uh, such as water harvesting and conversation compost and mulch <clears throat> and in uh, urban gardening on the fourth Saturday of every month. We're also members of the United States Composting Council, a national organization who promotes the values and benefits of using compost to grow sustainable local plants. Uh, the United States uh, Composting Council had its 25th uh, anniversary uh, equipment show and we were the proud host up at uh, Lopez Canyon Environmental Center. We had a, over 500 uh, uh, vendors as well as close to 700 uh, visitors uh, from all over the country as well as other parts of the world. Uh, some from South America as far as the Canada. Uh, we were also uh, displayed on Channel 35 uh, for uh, that event. Uh, and this concludes my report. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Very interesting and informative. Any questions for Mr. Cruz? Commissioner Jacinto, we'll start with you. Yeah, I'll just say that, uh, um, Mr. Cruz, thank you for this excellent report. The fact that our city goes out and delivers compost uh, to its residents in different areas, I think, is, 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 is great um, um, uh, proactive support of growing food, hopefully, in terms yes, of... a lot of uh, people are interested in... We're having our annual open houses right now. A lot of people are finding out more. We're actually having North Central's tomorrow at 452 North San Fernando Road. So feel free to come if you're in this part of town. Yeah, I think that's a great service. To I think that's a great service, sir. Thank you for the great report. Perhaps even Dr. Tom Williams is listening. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Um, the oral report will be received. Um, uh, Mr. Campos, are we cleared the desk? Yes, you have. Yes. Yeah, you guys have time for a brief update okay all right so um, we'll be adjourned with the you have a few minutes with the exception of a brief management meeting in the conference room